Good morning and welcome back to the Windy City. My name's Savannah Peterson and we're here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, CNCF's largest North American event. We've had some thrilling conversations already, but I am personally particularly stoked for this one. We are going to be talking about the edge. John, what excites you about edge? It's the future of computing, is cloud, on-premise, and edge. That's the areas that are the most dynamic in cloud, and as the, as the AI wave hits, edge is our next area that's going to see massive innovation. Uh, yeah, we like it because it's the future. And uh, we've got two future leaders right over <laughs> here from Red Hat. Let's start with, so we get everybody on the same page. Announcements. There were some edge announcements from Red Hat. Sally, can you tell me about those? Yes, uh, Red Hat Device Edge is now GA and also includes the Ansible automation platform. So, so what does that very mean? Very exciting. What does that mean for your community? Uh, it means that Red, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is now extended out to the edge in an in optimized for edge way. Um, so it's really enabling our customers to um, extend their workloads out beyond the data center. Um, we've worked closely with customers like ABB and Lockheed Martin, and Ooh, they've exciting. been with us along the whole journey from, from when we were first developing a MicroShift, uh, which is an optional workload on Red Hat Device Edge, um, all the way through today, GA, yeah. Siobhan? Do you have yeah. any business um, <laughs> sure. specifics so, to add? Uh, Red Hat Device Edge is, um, like Sally said, right? we just announced general availability. It's a flexible platform, regardless of where customers are in their app modernization journey, and you know, we were talking about That's this exciting. earlier, right? Um, yeah. Edge yeah. computing is growing really fast. Some people say 20 times faster than core, and various wow. industries are going through uh, transformation, whether they are, yeah. you know, uh, manufacturing control systems, healthcare, retail. So we wanted to have a platform that gives them the flexibility, regardless of whether they are traditional workloads, you know, containers on Linux or Kubernetes, all the way at the far edge. Yeah, What's the we, driver for the, oh go ahead. Yeah, we, we really have to meet our customers where they are because there is such a mix. Um, some of our customers have never uh, used a, a containerization. And, and so for that, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Red Hat Device Edge is flexible enough to, uh, where customers can deploy things as RPMs, as containers, or as Kubernetes native. Yeah, um, Kubernetes deployments. is maturing, containers is getting more secure. I have to ask you, what do you see as the acceleration? What's the driver for the edge expansion? What's the yeah. big dynamic? What's oh, the power, power dynamic? Yeah, well, hardware accelerators becoming more accessible. You know, different types of, of hardware that, that is um, good for the edge workloads. That, that's been a driver, yeah. Yeah, and, and from a customer's uh, or partner's perspective, it's the same thing that's been happening in the IT world. Now they want to do it in operations technology world because everybody wants to move to subscription-based pricing models. And the way they can achieve that is by you know, being agile and delivering software you know, innovation rapidly, right? So that's one of the big drivers as well. I got to ask you, one of the things we're seeing with AI is the surge and uh, enthusiasm around vertical industries. So edge, industrial, retail, these mm -hmm. use cases are emerging. Yeah. What's going on there? How do you guys see that emerging faster? How's AI and Red Hat converging in on these verticals? Because you think retail, you yeah. think industrial edge, which people have been playing at, is super hot right now because you got kind of AI coming into the fold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do you guys see that? What's your vision? Yeah, well, um, uh, enabling the edge really means enabling AI. And when you're able to harness data right where it's being generated and really um, act on that with you know, real-time analytics of the edge data, um, it, that, that's, yeah. That's where the data is the value in the, in the exhaust. The data, the data. Yeah, we have so many um, devices all over the world generating data, but we don't, we haven't fully realized how to use it, how to harness it, how to you know improve our lives with it, and and so that's where edge computing is going for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so many sensors and different data points and 
there's still that, we need that central processing, like our human you, brain, to yeah. discern what this actually means. Yeah, you always need for the data to, to go back to a semi-central location to process, to filter. You know, only a small percentage of data generated is really useful. So it's Relevance important. Relevance is a big part of this. Yeah, yeah. it's important to, to know how to um, filter out the data and use it, yeah. What are some of the use cases and customers you're working with? You mentioned Lockheed Martin, but I would imagine you get to see some of the coolest instances right. of this. I understand there's probably a few you can't tell me about, yeah. but do you have some favorite examples? Siobhan, let's go with you first. Yeah, sure. So uh, in the defense industry, right, Lockheed Martin, this is a public story, they have a really small compute on their stalker drone, and they wanted to be able to rapidly iterate and deploy new AI ML models for uh, image processing, right? Because you know, these drones are used for surveillance. And whether it's in the training period or in like production missions, the mission parameters change dynamically, right? They may be you know, out surveying for forest fires and then suddenly have to redeploy the drone for uh, surveying for like a capsized boat, right? Mm -hmm. So that requires the ability to rapidly change the AI ML software. So that's why they wanted to use uh, a lightweight Kubernetes platform, right, um, all the way on this really small compute. So that's yeah. why they worked with us, right? Uh, with Sally was one of the you know yeah. pioneers working from on Microshift from day one. Yeah, and yeah. we worked hand in hand with Lockheed. Impressive. Yeah, Microshift is such a, an interesting project, and I'm 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 really honored to have been a part of it. So we took the core of Kubernetes, the the API server, the Kubelet at CD, and we um, embed that into a single binary, and uh, and then w from the OpenShift perspective, a lot of thought went into what parts of OpenShift are really important for um, the edge. And we landed on things like our um, security context constraints that are specific to OpenShift. Um, and uh, like the service CA operator of OpenShift, which manages um, TLS certificates. So we include those. We include a few OpenShifty things on this very lightweight Kubernetes that can run on the edge. And at the end of the day, MicroShift is just a process running on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And so, it, with a systemd service, uh, and 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 the um, the networking and the um, storage are really integrated with Red Hat Enterprise Linux with the host operating system. So it's different than other lightweight Kubernetes because um, other lightweight Kubernetes are fully containerized, but we really um, integrate with Linux at, at every point. And the benefit, what's, what's the benefit to the uh, environment? Faster, is it smaller? What's the what's the the benefit of the micro shift? Yeah, uh, well, okay, so the benefit of Kubernetes native workloads at the edge is that um, streamlined, consistent pattern um, that you can, you can develop uh, AI workloads, you can, you can train models in your you know, core data center, and then uh, you can deploy them using the same patterns, the same CI, CD system yeah. in a Kubernetes native way, and that's, that's what our customers are. Yeah. Um, the ones that are used to running Kubernetes, that's what they want. We were talking, uh, first of all, I love this topic, as, as you know, Savannah mm -hmm. does too. The Edge, you asked us before we came on camera what we think the cool yeah, thing about the Edge is. But I want to go back to that because this is kind of what I like about the Edge. If you look at the digital work business, it's a complex system. Yeah. You got employees out there, you got customers, they could be anywhere around the world. So yeah. we did a case study on theCUBE around Uber and how mm -hmm. their platform yeah. works. Because they have Uber. Da different databases, they got drivers, they got customers, things are moving, you got real-time data, Delivery, you got yeah. maps, you got mashups. Yeah. So, so if that's the architecture of the future, yeah. mm -hmm. you got to roll your own. How, yeah. do you, how do you build out that is a such business a, architecture? Oh yeah, that is such a good um, observation. So w um, that was very important to us when we were developing Red Hat um, Device Edge. So we, you get the, the, the base golden um, rel, and then uh, it's really important for edge workloads to be able to customize the operating system. And so, and if you think about how con containers change the world, everything you need to run your workload is, is included, is packaged, within a, a container image, and we're extending that to the operating system. So what, if you have workloads yeah. that you, um, 
uh, that are, you know, important workloads can be embedded right into the operating system rather than deploying them after the fact. And, and that's really exciting. That's that real-time relevance, baby. Well, that's what we've been you know, talking about. I'm smiling because theCUBE's been around for 13 years. We've interviewed all the CEOs of Red Hat oh, uh, yeah. over the years. And I knew Arvind Krishna. Red Hat fans. When he was about to buy Red Hat yeah. at Red Hat 2018, I think it was. And I said to him back then, you know, if this cloud thing goes the way it's going to go, Arvin and Paul Comier at that time. Oh, Paul. You know, I mean, I'm just speculating here, but like, operating system, mm -hmm. like you got cloud, you got to connect the edge, it's distributed, come. Like, when, isn't it like an operating system? And they're like, because it's Red Hat, you guys make operating systems. As of like, course, yeah. that's so, why we're so well suited for the right. edge. And, and, our, and We're yeah. talking about an operating system. Yeah. That's where we're going with this. Absolutely. This is what the world will be. Right. That's why we're and, so excited. Yeah, <laughs> and the other thing about edge is that it's heterogeneous, right? Exactly. Because um, there's so many different um, industry specific hardware vendors, there's ARM, right? Like, you know, because yeah. these uh, edge locations don't have enough power, space mm -hmm. cooling, so you ne need that really efficient compute. So, and our Red Hat's, you know, open source based innovation is really resonating well with customers, right? So we're excited too. We share the vision. We, I'm a big Red Hat fan, as you know. We love, love the company <laughs> and we love the operation system model. <laughs> Enthusiasm is great. Yep. Confidence is what closes the deal for yeah. customers. So how do you guys talk to customers who are enthused? Some may be kind of neutral, but the ones that are enthused got to get confident. What are you guys doing to give that confidence that security's yeah. there, yeah, the yeah, right yeah, model's yeah. going to be loading at the right yeah. time, everything's assembling, running, we, oh, loading and linking and all that good stuff that goes on yeah, at the edge and core. What's the confidence factor? What oh, do you guys do that's to easy to answer. Actually, okay. we work very closely with our customers, the engineers. You know, I meet weekly with ABB, and and we go over like a, a small list of things that we need to enable over the next week, and and you know we iterate like that, and then the next week there's a new list, and so just working really closely with customers and the 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 various customers, we find those common. Um, problems and and that's what goes into the core um, the core product or the and if core you're not solution. having those convos with the community you're not going to develop the right solution so yeah and open source is 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 at the forefront of everything we do I want to stay there for a second mm -hmm. since KubeCon is a bit of a celebration of the open source yeah. community mm -hmm. to a degree how important is open source to the edge to the future of industrial IOT to a lot of the different use cases that we're talking about. Shimon, let's go with you first. Yeah, so let's take the example of ABB, right? Another mm -hmm. of our Lighthouse customers. They wanted to use open source based innovation because they're you know, bringing together technologies from different vendors, whether that's hardware, right, or software, right, ecosystem. So our approach of having standard you know, enterprise Linux and lightweight Kubernetes as well as Ansible right, uh, is really beneficial for them because they can yeah. use the single platform, bring different hardware vendors, including you know, x86, ARM, uh, or software ecosystem, and bring their uh, industrial control systems right, to the next generation. So they yeah. have this uh, product called Edgenius, which is really harvesting all the uh, data that's coming from their control systems and they're able to bring that visibility to their end customers and develop new apps, right? Yeah. Uh, and deploy them rapidly. So I think for them, open source plus this lightweight Kubernetes and our Red Hat devices add, just really help them transform their control systems. <laughs> I, yeah, I have to add because I'm so excited about the work that we've been doing recently with ABB because yeah. they are all about harnessing data and um, a lot of that is is observability. How do you harness data? How do you collect it? Yeah. And so um, a, an open source project that is one of my favorites is open telemetry, and yeah. we have found throughout Red Hat that open telemetry can fill gaps in so many places, and mm -hmm. we're really working to integrate um, the open telemetry collector, and also we have some of the core maintainers at Red Hat working upstream in open telemetry, and that's how Red Hat that's how Red Hat does things. We we um, integrate in open source communities. Sometimes we start open source communities ourselves, yeah. and then we 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 bring those solutions in a supportable enterprise ready way. You guys are legends in open source. It's well known, well documented. We are. Doing more work here. What's your take of here, KubeCon? This progress of this community has been great. 
the, the maturization of Kubernetes. Yeah, it's pumping yeah. in here. How would you describe the status of where we are in the journey of Kubernetes, containers, and cloud native? Because soon I think the show will be called Cloud Native Con because yep. Absolutely. Kubernetes, will, Kubernetes will be like, oh yeah, it's like Linux, it's, it's in there. Exactly. Right. Uh, it runs. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't need a whole show about it. Right. Yeah. You can right. just, I, I always think, and when my kids ask me what I do, or, or anybody, <laughs> you know, Kubernetes, I work on Kubernetes, and it's sort of the backbone of the internet. It's, it's what, um, you know, all of their favorite video games, all of their favorite applications are running on Kubernetes, and it's just there, like yeah. you said, and, and it's come uh, to this point where it's stable, and you know, it, it, all of the innovation is about what, what can you run on Kubernetes, or integrate, or plug into it, and yeah. How do you read the tea leaves here at this conference? We look at th that word. Oh. It's at now, what's next? Because you know, can, Kubernetes is a disruptive enabler in a good way. Yeah. So what do you sure. see as disruptive enabling that's going to come out of this world? Okay. Yeah. I, I think, you know, like you said, right, it's, it's all the applications, because Kubernetes has matured now, right, so all the innovation, if you look at all the vendors here, it's around security, right? It's around security. observability, mm -hmm. and it's about, you know, new ways, like you know, new innovative ways or simplifying CI, CD, right? Yes. It's about simplifying that day zero, day two experience, security and so observability and EVPF is one of my favorites. Oh right? yeah. Uh, so many yeah. vendors out here <laughs> talking about, including Red Hat, mm -hmm, talking mm -hmm. about EVPF yeah. because that changes security and observability yeah. in a big way. Right? Uh, yeah, and I, I like how you mentioned security and CI, CD, because they really need to be interwoven. Um, yeah. I work a lot That's with a uh, SigStore, and yeah. the right way to develop software is to um, integrate digital signing, cryptographic signing, um, into your build process, and the build process itself is, is really critical to how secure your software is. And um, once you have that, then it doesn't do anything unless you're verifying or um, you know you set policies to um, to enforce those security um, to the cliche security. building in security from day one yeah. that's kind of the oh philosophy. yeah it's it's what? we've been saying it shifts left now it's up it's the responsibility of the developer especially in open source yeah. because these open source projects they catch on and it could be an 18 year old kid developing in his basement but it's it could be in yeah. in you know many enterprise solutions so we really need to encourage the the good habits of security um, from from the code. And that's the beautiful about open source, and it could be anybody. Oh yeah. The, the innovation could come from the dorm room to the boardroom. Yeah, yep. And beyond. Yeah. And at the edge, <laughs> unintended <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> All right, last question for okay. y'all. Let's take out our, our, let's take off our work hats for yep. a second. Our red fedoras. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> your beautiful matching red fedoras. <laughs> and, and I'm curious, what is your favorite, not just how it'll change our world since it's been a discourse, but what's your favorite edge use case? What gets you the most excited? Well, I'm, I'm going to take a, a sort of a virtuous, virtual signaling stance here. And, this is a um, moment for it. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, my favorite project right now is um, a, a coworker of mine is enabling a remote hospital um, in, you know, far off remote um, Africa, I believe. <laughs> I'm not sure, exactly sure, but but he's using edge. He's using all these edge solutions to enable um, high tech uh, scanning device for a population, a, a community that would would not have it otherwise. Mm -hmm. So for me, yeah. I just felt that. I just got goosebumps as we talked about it. This is the stuff that will change the world. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's it's decentralizing hardware tooling. Uh, data that can inform medicine or the planet or whatever that is that will shape our future mm -hmm. and yeah, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm with you. What about you, Shpan? One of my favorite use cases is um, medical devices, right? So we're going to see so much innovation in medical devices. I mean, it's about people's lives, faster diagnosis with you know, AI ML based uh, you know, pre-diagnosis, right? Yeah. Um, using um, the small compute on these devices. So I think we'll see a lot more accessibility of medical technology all over the world oh, yeah. by bringing edge computing to these devices. So. I, I have a fun story. My sister, she's an endocrinologist, and that is all of her patients have diabetes. Yeah. And um, it's a, an open so a father who is a software engineer developed an open source solution yeah. for a feedback loop in your insulin pump. Mm -hmm. And uh, it oh, took wow. cool. it took years and years for the FDA to finally approve this. But along the way, um, many many uh, 
patients were, were, were going to GitHub and, and, and downloading that solution wow. because it, it was so life changing for the patients yeah, why wait? to have that. Just, and I deploy. mean, that's amazing. Yeah. That's and called I'm deploying just, I know. some code. This, this patient <laughs> who's never even thought about GitHub, let alone on oh, totally. you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean what a cool, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. don't know the rep get that. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow, yeah, what a yeah. beautiful And he, he has started a company, and I wish I could plug it because I don't remember the name of it, but yeah. I'll <laughs> <laughs> well, plug it in the comments of the YouTube video. Okay. Sally, I wish everyone had your enthusiasm. Oh my and gosh, thank you. both are great. I'm loving the smiles. You're even in your CNCF attire. Of course. Thank you both so much for being here. Hopefully we'll get to see you when we're in Paris. This has been a really exciting conversation. John, thank you for being here and your insights. I love that we both geek out on this as much as the other guy. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I appreciate you being appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, viewers. Speaking of being grateful, we're grateful you're tuning in today to day two of KubeCon, Cloud Native Con here in Chicago. My name's Savannah Peterson, and you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.